woman who is extremely intelligent doesn't mean that you can't be a woman who loves. And when I say love, I mean absolutely from the bottom of your soul, the pit of your soul. Love your image, your personal image, how you show up into the world. And part of that is actual like self-acceptance. Part of that is actual love for yourself, which is something I do work with people on as a style coach. But also the other part of that is the willingness to invest time, energy, and money into oneself. Once you set that vision for yourself, all that's all you can all that's going on in the background is just waiting for you to align with your actions like giving your time giving your energy and investing your money into who it is you say you want to be so that will get me <laughs> that is my intro into what we're going to talk about today which is style and your money mindset and i this topic actually hit me on tuesday i was planning to go live on something else I was going to talk about your image and, and success. And I might talk about that next week, but I it hit me like a ton of bricks <laughs> on Tuesday evening that we can't even get into that conversation until you become really clear with yourself about your money mindset and how where and why that's actually holding you back from the things that you say you want in this life. Right before I get started, let me introduce myself. Many of you know me already. Hey girl, hey, I'm Kyla, your go-to style coach. For those of you who don't know me, I help brilliant women create brilliant closets, which ultimately lead to brilliant lives. In my own life, well, we'll get into how that showed up in my own life, but in my own life, these are lessons in style that I had to learn that deeply affected my um, life as it, as it relates to work, as it relates to love, as it relates to play, which are the three major pillars in our aspects of life. So one thing that I realize when I'm talking to people, some of you, I'm sure I've DM'd you and I will have conversations with everyone just about what do you feel that you know about style? What do you feel that you don't know about style? Where did these ideas come from? And I've noticed that for a lot of us in our thirties and some of us in our late twenties, we grew up or at least had a coming of age around the hall culture, which has deeply affected how we view style, how we view fashion, how we think of trends. Like, honestly, people were, there were always trends throughout history. There have always been ways that people dress. We define decades by the way people got dressed in those times. With all that being said, we are now in this we're, they're called micro trend cycle where there is a new trend every 48 hours. <laughs> Things are constantly changing because we have these content machines that are like a fire hose <laughs> and we're consuming so much. And that is so beautiful. But at the same time, we are starting to normalize things that were never normal or things are starting to become normalized that should have never been normal because they're not sustainable. And one of those things is the idea of having these hauls. Like every single month, every single week, you have this haul of things that you've purchased. Um, you're seeing this influencer unboxing these things that she's getting. And it's very different for her because her lifestyle is centered around that. She's literally on a PR list for different brands to constantly be sending what they're launching. And we, as the consumer, are seeing that as we scroll on across all sorts of platforms. There's nothing wrong with that. It is honest work. But we, as consumers, need to have the, we need to have the uh, wisdom to know 
that just because she is sharing what she is wearing doesn't mean that is something that we need to be doing or striving for. That's not realistic. It's not really going to do anything for your style to be wrapped up in thinking that being stylish means that you need to be on the up and ups of everything that's going on at all times is not true. That is actually the antithesis of style. That is simply being a consumer, but style is much more about what you're creating than what you're consuming. So let's, let's get further into it. What I want to talk about is what my money mindset is one, how it relates to your style. What is your style saying? What is your style trying to say to you about your money mindset? And what is your style saying to other people about what your money mindset is? Because the trained eye can tell. (laughs) And then after that, I want to talk about how this is actually impacting other areas of your life, because how you do one thing is how you do everything. And it's not just your style that is being deeply affected by a money mindset that isn't serving you. First things first. Hauls every week and every month are not normal. That is not what you should be doing at all. And if you find yourself feeling like you need to do that, or if you're finding yourself rebelling against the machine that is telling you to do that, you are getting it wrong. And here's why. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to how we style ourselves, how we buy clothes, all of that stuff does trickle down to money. It does. And there are two mindsets around money that people can have. The first is the most popular. And I don't care. I don't care how rich or not rich you feel you grew up. I don't care how rich or not rich you feel you are now. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what your family structure was like. A majority of us are moving and operating from a price-based mindset when it comes to money. What do I mean when I say price-based? A price-based mindset is thinking about, you know, shopping around the idea of what you can get for what you have. This can look like saying, hey, I would much rather shop clearance than shopping the full price items. I might come into a store and beeline to the back of the store to head to the clearance rack instead of stopping and actually seeing the lay of the land in the store. If you find yourself doing this, you are in price-based mindset when it comes to money. And while there's nothing necessarily wrong with the clearance rack, like I'm not against shopping on sale, you have to understand that price and value are not necessarily the same thing. Something can cost you $20. Something can cost you $10. The $10 thing is not necessarily cheaper. Cheaper could be defined by the price. That you paid for it and say, yeah, it's definitely less than $20. But then at the same time, cheaper can look like how much longer is it going to last you? Cheaper might look like, does it actually get done? Does it actually help you accomplish what you're looking to accomplish by purchasing it? If you bought something that is $10 and you're really happy because you got it for less than $20, and the other places you were looking for it, but it falls apart the minute you start try to use it, or you notice that as you're using it, the item starts to deteriorate really fast, or as you're using it, you notice that, hey, it actually doesn't do like three out of the four things I needed for it to get done. Now you might start to wonder, well, really, was this a better deal than having paid for the $20 item, right? So now let's talk about what value-based money mindset is, right? Value-based money mindset is when it comes to your style 
and building a brilliant high ROI closet looks like this. You could shop some places and get eight things for $150. Or you could go to another place and get one singular item for $150. Say you're looking for a blazer specifically. Those eight things for $150, sure, you got them for less money. That's, I mean, like, sure. But at the same time, did you actually get what you needed? Did you actually get a piece that works seamlessly with the items you already have in your wardrobe? Did you get a piece that actually flatters your body? Maybe it's your wow color. Maybe it's actually going to be a piece that lasts you a long time. It's a piece you can even pass down to someone if you would like to. It makes you look at what that $150 can do much differently when you're viewing it from value versus price. I like to say that price is a very like small part of what value is. Price is an aspect of value, but it is not completely and totally what makes something valuable or invaluable, right? So this can show up in your style, again, like how you're shopping. This can show up in your style, like the items that you're holding on to that have to go. Those items that you feel like, well, I spent money on this, so I must keep it even though you don't really have anywhere to wear it, doesn't really look good on you, it's ill-fitting, you're feeling this need to hold on to it and tie yourself to that item simply because you're obligated to now. I find that price mindset puts you in much more of an obligation place. It puts you in this place where you are working for your items, whereas a value-based mindset allows your items to work for you, right? Those eight items, right? Let's go back to those eight items that cost you $150. Those eight items may not be aligned, right? They may not flatter. They might cause extra clutter in your life because every thing that you choose to buy, whether it's this mug or it is this book, Every single item that you choose to purchase in your life is an item that you have some level of responsibility for. You have a responsibility for the maintenance of that item. You have the responsibility of putting it away, washing it, folding it, ironing it, taking it to the dry cleaners. Everything you own is has a responsibility tied to it for you. So now you have eight new responsibilities that might not be aligned. They might not even flatter you. They might end up getting worn once or twice and never again. They might fall apart the minute you try to use it. You might try to use it and realize it doesn't even get you to where you were trying to go. That is actually a waste of your money versus that one super aligned, well-tailored, um, high quality fabric item, like a blazer, shirt, dress, purse, whatever it is that you could have bought for that same exact amount of money. Now, when I grew up, we were going straight to the clearance rack. My mom was trying to be as economical as she could. I mean, hello, she was an immigrant with first generation children just trying to make it in the USA. <laughs> it's a lot, it can be a lot. So her mindset was, let me try to get the most bang for my buck by shopping clearance. And that's how I grew up seeing people do that. So I got to a point in my life where I was not making my own money, obviously. And I um, started realizing that I would have this like, like clothes, just all these clothes, still feeling like I had nothing to wear, constantly having that chair full of clothes that's like staring back at you. Um, my mornings are now filled with decision fatigue. I still somehow wearing the same thing over and over again because I don't even know what's going on in this closet. Um, and I never feel like I'm wearing the thing that makes me feel ready to be approached by the opportunities I truly desire. But my clothes were cheaper. <laughs> you see how what we think is actually like a great benefit is actually hindering us from where we're supposed to be. 
buying something from a value-based mindset is going to feel different. You're going to know how you're buying things based off of how you feel, right? I talked about having those strong negative emotions, strong positive emotions, and not allowing yourself to be thrown by them. Here's why. Because if you feel like buying things on clearance gives you that little like jolt of like, yes, I I like beat the system out a little bit. And like you did, so like congrats. But at the same time, if that is like the feeling that you're looking for, Every time you go shopping, instead of shopping out of intentionality, then you're not shopping for the right reason. And you're not really creating a valuable high ROI closet, right? You're just buying things because they feel like a deal. You're not really thinking about the bigger picture. You're just focused on what you feel like is enough and too much, And this can look like, (laughs) I don't know if you've ever found yourself doing this. I will say I am guilty of having done this in the past. I refuse to do it anymore. It's just so ridiculous. You've ever like gone to buy something online and then right when you're about to hit checkout, you you get that little notification that pops up that says, hey, if you spend like 20, 50 more dollars, you'll get free shipping. And then they're like, well, I want to get free shipping, right? So you now find yourself adding things to cart just so that you can get this free shipping. You're buying more, but feeling like you're getting a discount. Yeah, no, that's not a thing. (laughs) That is not a thing. And we know this in our logical mind. But a lot of times when we're shopping, we're not shopping logically. A lot of times when we're getting dressed in the morning, We're not getting dressed logically. We're getting dressed based off of our emotions. We're saying, hey, I just want to be comfy and I don't really feel like it today and I don't want to be a try hard. So let me just throw this on. That is not logical when you're thinking about the bigger picture of your life and how you're trying to show up. You're being illogical and it's actually hurting you, right? So think of it this way. When you're having that value-based mindset instead, What you're doing is saying, hey, I'm going to buy for quality, not quantity. And that is the answer. You're going to buy less, but buy better. You might spend the same amount of money, maybe even get to the point where you start to feel comfortable buying less for a little more money, but understanding what's tied to that purchase from the larger picture. This is what intentional shopping looks like. And it's good for your style. And it's also good for your wallet and your career and your goals and your desires in the long term. So let's talk about (laughs) how this can even pop up in your career, right? And it was interesting because this is when I had that like revelation on Tuesday. You're talking with some people and after doing a little bit of market research, I was sitting here going, wait a damn minute. (laughs) I don't know if you've seen that TikTok meme that's going around where it's like Carrie Bradshaw saying, and then I was thinking, and then I couldn't help but wonder. (laughs) That is me at all times. (laughs) That's me always. But um, I I couldn't help but wonder, (laughs) how is this showing up outside of our closet? And it shows up in our career, I wrote this down, by the idea of time. Let's replace money, right? Because money is a man-made commodity. It's not something that we always had as like human beings. It's something that we created, right? To talk about value, to represent value. Time is similar to that. Time is a system we created so that we can have structure. It's showing up in your career with time because you feel like spending your time working hard is what should get you far. This is so similar to that price-based mindset because what you're doing is giving away what is now feeling like this finite resource in order to try to get to where, try to get to something in the short term versus thinking about the big picture, right? So if you are spending your time at work saying, I show up here every day, I do my job. I don't make too much noise. I don't make any problems. 
I do good work. Everything is on time. I keep my head down and I get out of there. And you're expecting to have the reward on the other side of that be that promotion, raise, recognition, um, opportunity, um, being asked to speak, being asked to lead, then you're doing it wrong, right? That's that very limited mindset. You're limiting yourself. You're constraining yourself by thinking that working hard, spending your energy and spending your time that way is what's going to get you what you want. When in reality, working smart is better than working hard. We all know this. We all know this. It's harder to do it in practice, but we have the understanding of this, right? Working smart and not hard is what is similar to the value-based mindset, right? You're thinking about what can I get done in the amount of time that I have that will have the greatest amount of value. You're showing up to meetings saying like, hey, this is what I think. You are actually taking the time to share your thoughts and feelings. You're spending your time actually building a relationship with leadership. You are going for your opportunities instead and creating them for yourself instead of waiting for them to fall in your lap because of you believe that you're going to get some reward for being quote unquote good, nice, smart, hardworking, right? How you do one thing is how you do everything. And like I said, again, this is easier in theory than it is in practice, which is why I highly, highly suggest getting into my coaching container around style coaching. You think that we're going to sit down and play around with clothes, but it's so much bigger than that. What we're going to do is really unpack your mindset around your style. Your style says a lot about what you see in yourself, how you present yourself to the world is going to also shift how other people see you and what they think you're capable of. When you're saying, again, when you're saying, hey, you know, honestly, I don't try too hard. I just throw on what's there and get out the door. I got better things to do. You are forgetting the value of showing up, ready for that opportunity, saying, here I am to my opportunities, saying, I want to be noticed saying, actually, yes, ask me a question about my brilliant dress, my glasses, my purse, my shoes. And let's also talk about, <laughs> let's also talk about, here's what I think. Here's how we can make an impact. I have a lot to say, and I want to be a part of the conversation. These are skills that we have to learn. It's something we can understand in theory, but it's something we have to practice. Getting into Brilliant Woman, Brilliant Closet group coaching program is what's going to help you build up the skill set around actually doing these things in practice, giving you the homework assignments you need to actually start doing these things in practice, giving you the community you need to be around other like-minded like women, giving you the coach that you need to hold you accountable to actually creating the life that you say you want. How you do one thing is how you do everything. I highly suggest starting with your clothes first. I highly suggest starting with your style first. Clothes are oftentimes one of the, our first introductions to money. Um, shopping in a store is oftentimes our first introductions to money, especially here in the U.S. And it's the first awareness you start to get around affordability, around spending, around getting some, giving something to get something. But very few times were our parents equipped with the knowledge around value, what it means to invest, um, compound effects to really give us the deep um, understanding we would have needed to really build a value-based mindset. And that's okay. There is no shame in that. Most of us, again, come from that. Um, many of our money traumas and lessons were formulated in the checkout line at a store or formulated in the parking lot of the store before you go in because don't ask for anything when we get to the store. And unfortunately, you know, that 
started to create a mindset that really at no point, because we're not being taught about these things in school, where we might talk about it a little bit with friends or colleagues, but we're not really ever in spaces where in depth talking about the value I'm getting or the value I'm giving or talking about what it means to invest in myself so that I can show up in the world different, so that I can also compound on that initial investment. Because when you start thinking about, oh, wait, maybe I should have a style identity. Or maybe, hey, I already have a signature style. And it's the signature style I have right now is kind of frazzled. People would look at me and assume that I don't really care too much about myself. So why would they assume that I would care about this opportunity that they have that is huge? Why would they assume that I'm responsible enough to manage that? Why would they assume that I would even give it the extra time and attention it needs if I don't even do those things for me. Because the way you're dressing is t saying things to people. It's signaling things to people before you even open your mouth, right? So what is value when it comes to clothing? What does that mean? Well. You heard me talk about the higher ROI closet earlier. And what that really means is that you have pieces in your closet that you can, you can literally see, pull out any piece in your closet and say, here's how this has been valuable. You could pull out a white t-shirt, right? If you haven't already, make sure you download my closet essentials checklist. That is where I go through the items everyone needs to have, regardless of what their style and identity is, regardless of their lifestyle. These are just the basic pieces people need to have in order to build a proper style foundation. A white t-shirt is one of those items. You could pull out a white t-shirt and say, okay, I might have spent X, Y, Z on this. You might have spent 10 bucks. You might have spent 100 bucks. But at the end of the day, you can say, here's the return on investment I've gotten through my energy, how easy it is to dress this and style this in the morning. Through my showing up at work. I'm not feeling insecure or feeling small because I'm dressing to play small. I'm actually showing up in a way at work where I am saying like, here I am. I'm open and I'm ready for opportunity, right? You will say, here's how I've gotten that return on investment with my, my um, social life. <laughs> here's how I've gotten that return on my investment in this shirt in my love life. Here's how I've gotten that return on my investment even in my money because there is cost per wear also. So all of those things combined is what it means to look at the larger picture of spending on your style, right? And yeah, you have cost per wear, you have quality, you have clothing as a tool for success, clothing that has intentionally been added to your closet to your wardrobe so that you can show up the way you actually need to show up in this world. That's what it means to be value-based when it comes to your money mindset around style. That's what it means to have a high ROI closet. Whew, so I'm getting close to the end here. Getting clear about your style identity is also mindset work. It's not just getting dressed so you can be like the cool kid on the block. It helps with that, but <laughs> it's about a lot more than that. That style identity work is money mindset. It's self-perception. It's your public perception. It's, it's how you're showing up. At the end of the day, the one thing that is truly, 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 truly in your control is how you show up. And that is why I do the work I do as a style coach. That is why I love working with women in STEM specifically, because as a woman who was in STEM myself, I saw this firsthand. You yourself have seen this, whether you were aware of it or not. It's not about, oh, pretty privileged so that I can skate my way through life without actually doing anything. No, you're already brilliant. You've already done the work. It's time to 
lean into another power that you have control over. And that is your image because your image is a part of the larger package. If you are literally building yourself up in all these other ways and actively choosing to neglect your image, you are sabotaging your success. There's a part of you that's afraid of being successful and is choosing to sabotage that part of you so that you cannot. I, as your style coach, am here to help you do an exorcism. We are going to tell her thank you and goodbye. She needs to go so that you can show up holistically as the person who is truly after what you desire. So um, <laughs> with all that being said, I'm going to wrap up here, but I just want to invite you to join in on Brilliant Woman, Brilliant Closet. It is a six-week group intensive where you and nine other women in STEM are going to work with me. I'm going to help you define and build your style while giving you the backbone you need to show up in it confidently. This is not going to be like, oh, well, I have this Pinterest board full of ideas or, you know, there's that girl I follow on Instagram and I do like the way she looks. So I'm just going to mimic that or I'm just going to collect all these ideas and then one day I'll execute on them. No, I am going to give you what you need to execute on them there and then. Before that program is even over, you will start to see the shift in how you're showing up and how the world is responding to you because of that. We're going to do that in six weeks. We're going to have weekly sessions. We're even going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And if you sign up before September 15th, which is right around the corner, you will actually get a um, extended one-on-one -on -one coaching time with me so we can really dive deep. Either way, whether you get that extended time or not, you already have a full hour of my sole attention on you, along with six weeks of us sitting down as a group, moving through these common issues together, actually having actionable steps on making a change, and also being there to support each other through that change. Because making a big lifestyle change like anything else is something that can feel it can bring on strong feelings, both positive and negative. So me and your fellow women will be there to help you through that, along with educational content, teaching you what you need to know to style you to be your best and favorite you. So if you're interested in that, please send me a DM on LinkedIn, send me a DM on Instagram. You can find me via email at Kyla, K-Y-L-A at it's Kyla, not Kayla.com. And I would love to send you the information and get you it all signed up. We get started October 2nd and we will be running up around mid-November, that midweek of November. So I'm so excited to welcome you all into the group program. It's going to be so good. It's going to be this times 20 million. <laughs> and it's really just going to be about helping you develop the style and the confidence you need to really be standing out because there's no reason why you, a brilliant woman, should be feeling like you're not worth it, should be feeling like you need to piecemeal your ability to show up together yourself. You don't need to do that. You can get help. And before we even close out 2024, because this year is flying by, before you even close out this year, you can transform into a to the higher version of yourself that you see for yourself, the version of yourself you catch yourself daydreaming about. It's time to show up as her. So if this really spoke to you, I'm so happy. Again, please let me know. Reach out to me. I would love to chat with you and feel free to share this with a friend. Share this video with a fellow brilliant woman that you know needs to be showing up differently. 